everyone. My name is Michelle and I will be your host today. If you're here in person or watching online, we want to extend a huge welcome. We will start with a few worship songs to give glory to our wonderful God. We'll then take communion together. If you're worshiping from home, feel free to grab some juice and crackers so you're ready when the time comes. If you're here in person, be sure you grabbed your communion cup from the lobby. Finally, Rebecca will continue our series, Summer Playlist. We are called to worship through song, prayer, service, giving, and so much more. We want to thank everyone who has been called to worship through giving. When you give through Pantano, you help us accomplish our mission of loving people to Jesus and launching passionate people to make a difference. There are a few ways you can give. You can give in person at one of our donation boxes around campus. You can give on our website by clicking the Give button, or you can text Pantano to 46356. Because of your generosity and some awesome volunteer leaders, we've had over 150 kids and students attend camp this summer. Speaking of summer, come celebrate with us at Family Fun Night this Friday, July 2nd, from 6 to 8 p.m. right here in the courtyard. We'll have inflatable jumpers, a train, hot dogs, and lots of other fun activities for the whole family. Visit our Next Step page and click the Kids Ministry button for more info. We want to get to know you. If you're new, have been around for a while, or just want to catch up on current events, we would love to hear from you. If you fill out one of our digital connect cards, we would love to send you a free gift to say thank you. Visit our Next Step page and click the Connect button. We are getting ready to go into worship. Please join us in singing praise to our Almighty God. Hey, welcome church, man. We're gonna jump right into worship today. And as we do, we get to celebrate with some amazing people who are getting baptized, which is one of our favorite things to celebrate, right? So come on, get on your feet. Let's worship him with all we have today. Here we go. Too high. 
of your glory I need a shelter I was a northern Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was grown
He's the only one that can change a heart, change a life, and we just saw that. We celebrated with an amazing group of people. That's what God's doing, writing his story in our lives. And are you grateful for that story? One more time, come on, let him hear you today. As we continue to worship, I'm just gonna invite you to take a seat and prepare the elements of the communion, the bread and the juice. God's writing his story in us and in our lives. And it just, it, every week we just start, we celebrate because man, there is so much to celebrate. Even those of us who are struggling, we can see God's hand in it, God's presence in it. He is with us and that makes all the difference. The Bible says this, that while we were still sinners, while you and I were still deep in our sin, one tr translation or verse actually says we were dead in our sin. Christ died for us. Christ gave his life for us. He took our place on the cross. That's why we're here today. That's why we're able to be here and celebrate and to worship God personally because of what Jesus did. Amen? 2,000 years ago, he gave his life for us. He knew we would be here right in this moment. And he said, those are my people. I've called you. I chose you. And so I'm, I'm just gonna invite us to take a couple of moments of just reflection and prayer and just to thank God. And, uh, when you're ready, you can receive the elements. You can take those on your own. But until then, I just, I just want us just to kind of thank God for taking us. We were dead in our sins, God, and you redeemed us. God, we, were, we needed a massive rescue and you came, your plan to use Jesus on the work of the cross to redeem us. Before we ever drew a breath. Thank you that you're working in this moment. Holy Spirit, thank you that you're moving in our lives. Thank you that you give us life. You're turning our graves into gardens. You're taking our, our shame and our guilt and you're making it your glory because you replaced it. It's in your name we pray. There is nothing like Jesus, amen? amen? So refreshing to be in a time of communion every week. Just it refreshes my soul to be here, to be with you. Mm. And talk about refreshing. It's time to do some refreshing in this building. We are it's about six weeks away from a major of refreshing and the seating that you are in. And so instead of me trying to describe it to you, I'm just going to show you a little video. Watch this.
What do you think? It's gonna be great. I figured if it comes out half as good as the video looks, it's gonna be awesome. We're, uh, we're really excited about it. We've been planning it over a year. As soon as we get the permits, we'll start. Now, for those of you who are online, it's not gonna affect you. For those of you in the room, we're gonna move a little bit, just right over to those courts. We're gonna set up church right in there, moving the stage, it'll be great. It'll be a great experience. We're working hard on making all the plans work and all of that. So um, don't worry about it. We'll have space for you, unless we get too many, and then we'll have to start another service. It'll be wonderful too, we'll figure it out. I do wanna say, there you go. I wanna say that you can find more information at pantano.church slash next steps. There is a button there you can push, give you some answers to some of the questions. And for those of you, just take a deep breath, if you have a favorite seat, oh, I'm so sorry, but guess what? You get to pick a new one. It'll be great, it'll be good. Hey, turn your attention to the screens as we continue our summer series. Rebecca Hamlin will be up in just a minute. Today we are continuing our summer playlist series as we look at the songs of Psalms. And I love what Tim Keller, pastor and author, says about the book of Psalms. He says this, we are not simply to read the Psalms. We are to be immersed in them so that they profoundly shape how we relate to God. I love that, and today we're looking at a psalm that I believe has the power to change how we understand who God is, and as a result, it could completely transform how we relate to him. It's Psalm 139, and this is my favorite psalm. Now, admittedly, I am completely biased, but I think it's the best one. I love this psalm so much that I actually got a tattoo of it, true story. And I would love to show you a picture to prove it to you, but it's on my foot. And nobody wants to look at pictures of feet. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it, but that's how much I believe in the power of this psalm, the promises, the truth. And I'll share a little bit more about that later today, but for now, here's a little background information on Psalm 139. This is one of the most intimate songs in this entire book. It's written by David. And as you read it, it reads like an excerpt out of David's personal journal as he describes this incredibly close, meaningful, intimate relationship with God. And I'm excited to share it with you today because I believe that many of us, even those of us that are Christ followers, may have never experienced the depth of intimacy that David describes here. And here's why I think that is, because many of us, we don't fully understand the love of God. And those two things are connected. The scripture is clear that God is love, and if we don't understand his character and his nature, it's impossible to know him. And if we haven't fully experienced the love of God, our relationship with him can feel distant and disconnected. But as you read Psalm 139, it's clear that David does understand the love of God and that love transformed his life. So in this way, David will be our guide, teaching us and leading us today. There are three themes I want you to see from Psalm 139, three things that I believe point to God's character. God is personal, God is present, and God is forming us. God is personal. God is present and God is forming us. And all three point to God's overwhelming, relentless, indescribable love. Let's look at the first one, God is personal. Psalm 139 verses one through six. You have searched me, Lord. 
and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Church, at times, it can be easy to believe the lie that God is indifferent about us. But as you read Psalm 139, that's not at all what David is expressing here. Psalm 139 is first about David recognizing and celebrating God's personal and intimate knowledge of him. Verse one says, God, you know me. And in Hebrew, this word know is this concept of full knowledge. It's not a polite, one-dimensional, relational knowledge. This is deeply personal. Every detail, every thought, every desire, he knows. He knows. And this is such incredible imagery about God's personal and divine involvement in our lives that even things we miss, like sitting up and lying down, God is paying attention to those things. Matthew 10, 30 actually says that God has numbered the hairs on your head. That's incredibly personal knowledge. And there's something so grounding into the soul, so humbling even about being known. And it's what we all want, right? We all want to be known and yet we're afraid of it because intimacy is scary. Because you and I, we know what lies in the dark corners of our hearts and the fear is that if someone were to know the truth about us, that they would reject us. In fact, I think it's common to ask the question at different times in our lives, if God really knew me, how could he love me? But as David paints a picture of a personal God, he seems completely overwhelmed with gratitude that God knows him, that God knows it all. The joy, the sadness, the fear, the hopes, the dreams, the good, the bad, the ugly, God sees it all. And yet what David understands is that God's personal knowledge of him is a product of his deep love for him and this incredible desire for a meaningful relationship. I want you to think about this truth for a moment. God knows everything about you. Your greatest fears, your biggest struggles, your dreams. He even knows about that thing from your past that haunts you. And he loves you more than you will ever understand, more than you could ever know. And the Bible promises that nothing, nothing will separate you from that love. What an amazing promise. Another example of God's personal connection and his deep love is in verse five. It says, you hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. David is painting a picture here of such safety, such security, such tenderness and protection. And he's reminding us again that God relates to us individually, that he knows us personally. And that truth has the power to change how you understand who God is and how you understand yourself as known by God, but not just known, fully known and fully loved. God is personal. The second thing, the second theme I want you to see out of Psalm 139 is that God is present. God is present, verses seven through 12. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand 
will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. Church, it can be easy to believe the lie that God is aloof, that he is distant or that he is altogether absent. But as you read Psalm 139, it's clear that David understands that God is fully present. And he uses this beautiful poetic language and imagery to express that. Whether you're thinking of God or have forgotten him completely, he's there. Whether you're excited about your life or weighed down by the circumstances of it, he's there. God is fully present for all of it. Verse eight says, if I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Depths can be translated as Sheol, and Sheol in Hebrew means darkness and even hell. And David is reminding us that even in the darkest places of our lives, that God is present. Lean in, because I want you to hear this right now. You are seen by God. You are surrounded by God, by a caring, loving God. That God is present and his presence is expansive even beyond your knowledge of it. That his presence reaches to the darkest, hardest places to the shields of your life, and yet has the power to reach even the greatest moments of beauty and light. And God's presence ensures that you are never alone. You are never lost. You are never forgotten. And you are never far from God. And church, that's how we continue to have hope. That's how we continue to trust God, no matter what. Because it doesn't matter how hard you try, you can't escape God's presence. And when you understand God's love for you, there's nothing that will bring greater comfort, greater peace than that truth. That God will never leave you, no matter what. Why? Because of his love for you. And that love has the power to carry you through every trial, every storm. And so David is reminding us of the truth that God is present and that truth has the power to change how we understand who God is and how you understand yourself as seen by God. God is personal. God is present. The last one is God is forming us. Verses 13 through 18. For you created my inmost being, You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. It can be so easy at times to believe the lie that you are a mistake, an accident, a deviation from some plan. But here's what we know from the psalm that David clearly believed that he was created on purpose, with intention. And if that's true for David, the same is true for you and I. I love verses 13 through 14, it says, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. God's character, God's love goes into his creation and we are his greatest creation. And David's giving the, this creative voice to a creative God who shapes us into a masterpiece as he says, you are fearfully and wonderfully 
made. You who are struggling with self-doubt, wondering if you'll ever be good enough, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You who are wondering what is the purpose, the point of your life, God has a promise that he wants you to hear that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you who struggles with how your body doesn't work quite right, it feels broken in some way, God wants you to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's his promise to you and I. Have you ever considered that? How intentionally you, you were created? That our God who spoke the world into existence put the same thoughtful intention into your design. As you look outside, if you gaze up into the night sky, it's easy to be overwhelmed with awe at the beauty and the magnitude of it all. But when you consider that the same care, the same attention to detail, the same mysterious complexity was put into every fiber of your being, that truth, that promise will take your breath away. I want you to think about this truth for a moment, that there was a time when your mother wasn't even aware of you. You were not a thought or a hope. And yet the God of the universe was planning for you. He was aware of you. God formed you. He created you and I fearfully and wonderfully. But I want you to see something even deeper in this text. That God is forming us still. We are being formed by God, shaped by God even now. Verse 16 says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. He didn't just create us and then stop when we were born. He laid out every moment of every day from our first breath to our last, God forming us, shaping us, changing us, continues on throughout our entire lives. And we are being continually transformed into his image. And thank God he is not done with us yet. David here is reminding us that God is forming us. And that truth has the power to give our lives incredible purpose and meaning. It has the power to change how we understand who God is and how you understand yourself as created by a loving God. God is personal. God is present. God is forming us. Here's the power of this text. There's no formula he follows. There's just people he loves. God didn't just create everything. He created you. He doesn't just know everything. He knows everything about you. And he's not just everywhere. He's everywhere with you. And the truth that God is personal, God is present, and God is forming us, invites us into a deeper place of understanding and experiencing the expansive love of God. And through the power of God's love, you've been offered this opportunity to be seen, to be known, and to be loved fully, deeply, intimately. I mentioned as we started today that I got a tattoo of this psalm. It simply says, Fear and Wonder 139, as a reminder that I was created on purpose, with intention, and with incredible love. One of the reasons this psalm is my favorite is because it has played such an incredible role in my relationship with God. For years, it gave voice and language to what I didn't have but desperately wanted. When I was a young girl, I went through what so many young girls go through, and I was abused. 
And as a result of that abuse, two things became twisted. My view of God and my view of myself. Because that's what abuse does. It perverts the image of God and it perverts the image of God in us. And because of that, I couldn't understand how God could love me. I certainly couldn't love myself. And even as I got older in my teenage years, in my early 20s, I loved God. I did. But I didn't understand the love of God. And it felt like there was a wall, a barrier between God and I. I just couldn't experience him. And I remember praying, begging God to help me understand and experience his love. And I would search the scriptures looking for hope, for answers, for reassurance. And I found Psalm 139. And it's become a place of security for me as I, fighted, as I fought these twisted perceptions, these skewed realities. And it wasn't overnight. It was a journey, a process of God destroying the lies of the enemy. But this text has absolutely transformed how I understand who God is, how I understand myself as known, as seen, as created, and as loved by God. What about you? How do you view God? And how do you view yourself? Do you need God to transform that view? I often think about this, what if we all lived from a place of love? How would that change things? If we understood how truly God loved us, how deeply we were known and seen and loved by God. I think about this, when you imagine God's face, what if you imagined in his eyes compassion and grace and acceptance and love because I believe that is absolutely what you would see if you saw the face of God. If you believe that about God, that he truly knew you, he truly sees you, he truly created you, how would that change things in your life? How would it change how you see others, how you treat others? How would it change how you see yourself? And most importantly, how would it change how you experience and relate to God? I want you to think about your relationship with God. Do you understand the depth of God's love for you? David clearly did, and we see it over and over again in this psalm. And that love transformed his life. My hope and my prayer for you is that, is this, that this week you would become immersed in this psalm. And that you would understand and experience the depth of God's love for you. And the invitation to a more personal, more intimate relationship with him. We're going to end with an opportunity to respond to God's love in worship. But before we do, I wanna read Psalm 139. And my hope is that as we looked at these three themes, God is personal, God is present, and God is forming us, that you felt God speaking to you in one of those areas, and that there's at least one that you want God to transform, that you want God to show you, to reveal to you in a new way. And as I read, I would just ask that you keep it in your mind Open your heart and allow the Spirit to speak these words over you, these promises. So I want to invite you, if you feel comfortable, to close your eyes as I read Psalm 139 over you. And this is in a different translation. So for those of you that are familiar with this song, I pray that you would hear it again like it's for the first time. Lord, You know everything there is to know about me. 
You perceive every movement of my heart and soul, and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. You have laid your hand on me. This is just too wonderful, deep and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings wonder and strength. Where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you are there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you're there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It's impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me, for your presence is everywhere, bringing light into my night. There is no such thing as darkness with you. The night to you is as bright as the day. There's no difference between the two. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it, how thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body. When you created me in the secret place, carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me, before I'd ever seen the light of day. The number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you were thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. When I awake each morning, you are still with me. stand and respond to him today, to the power of his word. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath,
love our God knows no ends. Nothing can hold us back, and Romans 8 tells us nothing can separate us from it. One more time, before we leave this moment, whether you're here on campus or at home, can you just, if you're comfortable, just lift your arms, your hands to God in a receiving posture. What we wanna make for sure is that, God, we don't walk away from this moment and just go about our day, go about our life. God, because you have brought us here with your truth and whatever you need to tear down in our lives, whatever you need to break down, whatever you need to get over to make sure that we know in our hearts your love. Would you do that in us today, God? Thank you. God, you are personal, you're present, and you're forming us. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, let's say a big amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Church, I just wanna thank you for being here or watching online, and uh, if, you, if you're if you new, uh, man, thank you. Special thanks to you. We would love to see you get connected, so if you're online, jump in the chat, talk to one of our chat hosts. If you're right here in the room, walk across the courtyard. Starting point is the room for you. It's where you get started. It's got a big number one. You can't miss it. Come on down for prayer. We'll see you next week. Thanks.